the Blackfeet Nation, also known as Nitsi Tapi, or the Blackfoot Confederacy, was an indigenous community once inhabited the northern Great Plains of North America, primarily spanning present-day Montana, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. Their history unfolds as a multifaceted narrative that spans millennia. The Blackfeet are thought to have undertaken a migration to the Great Plains from the Northwest, possibly as early as 10,000 years ago. Initially affiliated with a larger Algonquin-speaking group, they gradually developed a distinctive language and culture. As a people deeply intertwined with the natural landscape of the northern Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains, the ancient Blackfeet culture was characterized by a profound connection to the land, a nomadic way of life, and a wealth of spiritual and social traditions. Welcome to another episode of The Native's Journal. Today, we will be delving into an ancient time of North American history. Stay with us as we uncover the untold story of the Blackfeet Nation, a people known for their rich and complex history and undaunted faith in their beliefs and customs, even in the face of tribulations. Before we continue with the story, make sure you like the video. And if you are new to our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe so you get notified each time we upload another video like this. Like other ancient Native American tribes, the Blackfeet adhered to a nomadic lifestyle, tracking the seasonal migrations of buffalo herds. The buffalo held a central role in Blackfeet culture, serving as the primary source of sustenance. Proficient buffalo hunters employed techniques like buffalo jumps and buffalo pounds to secure these vital animals. Buffalo meat constituted their primary food source, while buffalo hides were fashioned into clothing, teepees, and various commodities. The tribe ingeniously crafted tools from buffalo bones and sinew. Their dwellings were buffalo hide tents known as teepees, designed for easy assembly and disassembly allowing them to relocate their encampments as necessary to pursue the buffalo herds. The Blackfeet were deeply spiritual, placing profound faith in the intrinsic significance of all natural elements. They believed every facet of the natural world, including animals, flora, rocks, and celestial bodies, possessed spiritual essence. In their view, everything harbored a spirit, and this interconnectedness formed the bedrock of their spiritual convictions. Their spirituality was intricately interwoven with nature, and they revered the land and its resources. At the core of their faith were the sun and moon, revered as potent spiritual entities. The sun represented a benevolent spirit associated with life, growth, and warmth. Conversely, the moon often symbolized a protective spirit linked to the nighttime and the realm of dreams. The sun dance was one of the most prominent ceremonies in Blackfeet spirituality. During the summer season, they assembled, engaging in song, dance, fasting, and self-sacrifice. The sun dance served as their means of seeking blessings from the sun and establishing a connection with the spiritual realm. It also functioned as a vehicle for communal bonding and renewal. The Blackfeet practiced animism, attributing spirits to animals, plants, and natural features. Many animals, particularly the buffalo, held special significance in their culture. The buffalo were seen as sacred beings, providing sustenance and spiritual guidance. Apart from their strong spiritual beliefs, the Blackfeet were also very organized, their society was organized into bands and tribes, including the Siksika, Blackfoot, Kainai, Blood, and Piikani, Pigan, each with its leaders and territories. Extended families and clans played essential roles in their social structure, and decision-making was often based on consensus within the community. To preserve their cultures and traditions, the Blackfeet had a rich oral tradition passing down their history, stories, and cultural knowledge through storytelling. Elders were respected for their wisdom and often served as the keepers of traditional knowledge. The Blackfeet, 
like many indigenous groups of the Great Plains, were involved in conflicts and skirmishes with neighboring indigenous clans and tribes, often driven by competition for resources, territory, and disputes over honor and revenge. These conflicts were part of the complex intertribal relations in the region. This competition was the base of the intertribal rivalry between the Blackfeet and other Great Plains tribes, including the Crow, their ancestral enemies, the Shoshone, and their one relative, the Assiniboine. Raiding was a common practice among Plains tribes, including the Blackfeet. They would conduct raids on enemy camps for various reasons, including acquiring horses, stealing goods, or seeking revenge for past conflicts. At that time, White Quiver was one of the most notorious horse raiders. He was a big black Blackfeet man, famous for his numerous successful horse raids on enemy camps. By the late 16th century, the Blackfeet would make their first contact with the Europeans. This encounter was first presented as an opportunity for further growth and development, but later proved to be the beginning of the end of the tribe's freedom. The first European explorers to contact the Blackfeet were a group of French fur traders, followed by British and American explorers. These first encounters occurred as the European explorers ventured westward across North America in search of new trade routes and resources. Initially, the encounter between these two great nations was characterized by curiosity, experience, and trade. The white men introduced their goods to the Blackfeet nation in return for the rich fur and buffalo hide of the Blackfeet people. As the Blackfeet acquired the white man's firearms and horses, they became a powerful force, controlling an area that extended from current-day Edmonton, Alberta province, nearly to Yellowstone National Park and Glacier Park, to the Black Hills of South Dakota. Driving weaker tribes before then, the Blackfeet pushed westward to the Rockies and southward into present-day Montana. At the height of their power, in the first half of the 19th century, they held a vast territory extending from northern Saskatchewan to the southernmost headwaters of the Missouri River. The Blackfeet were one of the formidable military forces in the Northwestern Plains. For a quarter of a century after 1806, they vehemently opposed British, French, and American fur traders, whom they viewed as encroachers, effectively barring them from trapping in the bountiful beaver territories along the upper tributaries of the Missouri River. At the same time, they were at war with neighboring tribes, successfully acquiring horses and taking captives. After encountering the Europeans, the Blackfeet made their subsequent foreign encounter with the Americans. The American frontiersmen and explorers began contacting the Blackfeet and other Plains tribes in the early 1800s as they moved westward during the era of westward expansion in the United States. Just like the Europeans, they were also interested in the North American fur trade and settled in the North American Plains, benefiting from the rich furs of the native Plains people. After a while, the Blackfeet were no longer comfortable with the increasing numbers of settlers in their land. Not minding the trade relationship between the two nations, tensions and quarrels arose over trade practices, competition for resources, and misunderstandings. Due to the importance of the trading relationship to the two nations, they would later agree to a treaty as a means of settling their differences and clearing the misunderstanding between them. But unknown to the Blackfeet, this treaty will be the beginning of their deepest struggle as a tribe. The first treaty of the Blackfeet with the Americans was signed on September 17, 1851. This treaty, known as the Treaty of Fort Laramie, 1851, was signed at Fort Laramie in present-day Wyoming. The treaty established boundaries between indigenous territories and areas open to white settlement and recognized the rights of indigenous peoples to safe passage through these areas. While the treaty attempted to define boundaries and promote peaceful intersection, it faced changes in implementation. Conflicts over land, resources, 
and competing interests strained relations between the Blackfeet and the United States. As American settlers continued to move into indigenous territories, tensions escalated and the treaty's provisions were often violated. This led to further conflicts and ultimately contributed to the deterioration of relations between the Blackfeet and the United States in the following decades. For three decades after this first treaty, the Blackfeet declined to forsake hunting in favor of farming, which was the occupation the United States preferred and insisted the Plains people venture into. For this reason, the white men resorted to the indiscriminate killing of the buffalo to course the Blackfeet and other natives into a life of farming. Subsequently, when the buffalo were almost exterminated in the early 1880s, nearly one quarter of the Pigan died of starvation. After that, the Blackfeet took up farming and ranching. In 1865, the U.S. government sought to secure land to construct the Mullen Road, a military road connecting Fort Benton in Montana to Fort Walla Walla in Washington Territory. This road was intended to facilitate westward expansion and provide a military route for the U.S. Army. To achieve this, the U.S. government made a new treaty with the Blackfeet. This treaty, called the Blackfeet Treaty of 1865, aimed to address territorial boundaries and land sessions. While this treaty may have provided a temporary respite from hostilities, it did not bring enduring peace, and the relationship between the United States and the Blackfeet Nation remained complex and often contentious. In January 1870, a U.S. military cavalry unit led by Colonel Eugene Baker attacked a Blackfeet encampment along the Marias River in Montana. Many Blackfeet, including women and children, were killed in the attack. This tragic event, which was termed Maria's Massacre, occurred amid tensions over treaty violations and concerns about the Blackfeet raid on white settlements. The Blackfeet experienced significant land loss as a result of the treaties. Losing traditional territories disrupted their traditional ways of life, including hunting and gathering practices. In 1896, the Blackfeet tribe agreed to cede a portion of their lands to the United States in the Treaty of the Blackfeet Tribe of Indians. These land sessions were primarily intended for agricultural settlement and development. The treaty established specific reservation boundaries and provided land allotment to individual Blackfeet tribal members. Allotment aimed to encourage farming and assimilation into mainstream American society. In exchange for the land session, the U.S. government agreed to compensate the Blackfeet tribe. This compensation included a lump sum payment and annual annuities. The treaty also included provisions for the establishment of schools and provision of agricultural land and industrial assistance to the Blackfeet tribe. The 1896 treaty conserved two government-controlled areas, the Lewis and Clark National Forest, which contains the Badger II Medicine Area, an area of 200 square miles, and Glacier National Park, both part of the nation's former territory. The Badger II Medicine Area is sacred to the Blackfeet people. This sacred part of the Rocky Mountain Front was excluded from Blackfeet lands in the Treaty of 1896, but they reserved access, hunting, and fishing rights. In the spring of 1903, the first commercial oil discovery was made in the Swift Current Valley, just west of the Blackfeet Reservation in Glacier National Park. This discovery was made by Sand D. Sums, who was looking for copper ore in the Swift Current Valley. His interest in copper developed in 1902 when he found pools of oil when cleaning out his workings after blasting. In early 1980, the Bureau of Land Management approved drilling rights leases without consultation with the tribe. The Blackfeet worked hard to protect this sacred area where they practiced traditional religious rituals. The United States federal government suspended all leasing activities for drilling in this area in the 1990s, and in 2007, the Bush administration made permanent a moratorium on issuing new permits. Many leaseholders had already relinquished their leases, and in November 2016, 
the Department of Interior announced the cancellation of the 15 drilling rights held by Devon Energy Corporation in the Badger II Medicine Area. The Blackfeet Reservation, due to its remote location, has grappled with high unemployment rates. As of May 2016, the Montana Locale Area Unemployment Statistics Laos program reported an unemployment rate of 11.0% on the reservation. In 2001, the Bureau of Indian Affairs BIA, documented a staggering 69% unemployment rate among registered tribal members. Even among those fortunate enough to have jobs, 26% earned less than the poverty guideline. The primary economic driver for the reservation is revenue from petroleum and natural gas leases on tribal lands. In 1982, there were 643 active oil wells and 47 gas wells within the reservation, providing a significant income source. Tourism also plays a substantial role in the reservation's economy. Additionally, ranching and a modest lumber industry have contributed, with the latter supporting the Blackfeet Indian Writing Company's pencil factory in Browning. In 2002, farms situated partly on the reservation reported a combined income of $9 million. These 354 farms covered most of the reservation's land, with many being family-owned, including 198 owned by Native Americans. Beef cattle farming dominated, generating 80% of farm income, while smaller livestock operations, such as hogs and chickens, were present. There were also limited dairy cattle, bison, horse, and sheep farming. Crop cultivation occurred on 245,230 acres, with only 13% being irrigated, 32,158 acres. Crops included wheat, barley, hay, and a smaller amount of oats, Many tribal members found seasonal employment as wildfire firefighters, contributing significantly to individual income. In 2000, around 1,000 Blackfeet worked as firefighters, including the prestigious Chief Mountain Hotshots team. Firefighting earnings totaled $6.1 million that year, but this income was subject to the variability of wildfire seasons. On April 30, 2010, the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council BTBC, greenlit, three major initiatives totaling $5.5 million in revenue from oil exploration payments by New Field Production Co. These initiatives included a $200 particular per capita payment for all 16,500 members, initial funding for a new grocery store in Browning, and over $1 million for land acquisition within the reservation to reclaim property under tribal control in the present day, the Blackfeet community is actively dedicated to safeguarding their heritage, which encompasses their languages and land rights. The population is on an upward trajectory, with many Blackfeet members residing within reservations. They have played a pivotal role in advocating for the preservation of Montana's Rocky Mountain Front, as it holds paramount significance in their sacred legacy. Recent population estimates in the early 21st century point to approximately 90,000 individuals of Blackfeet descent residing in Canada and the United States. Even during periods when their traditions faced prohibitions, such as the Sundance, the Blackfeet persevered in keeping their cultural practices alive. They remain a dynamic and thriving community with an illustrious and profound history. Annually, the Blackfeet Nation observes North American Indian Days, a celebrated festival hosted on the Pow Wow Grounds near the Museum of the Plains Indian in Browning. This event stands as a testament to the enduring vitality of their culture and heritage. And that is all for today's video on the Natives Journal. Thanks for watching to this point. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more exciting videos like this one.